This week on the Time Lapse Show, a lot of video gear is expensive and hard to justify putting on a Christmas list with the expectation that other people are going to buy it for you. But today I'm going to give you my list of 10 stocking stuffers that are inexpensive and small and therefore easy to put on a Christmas list that you could get in your stocking this year. Hello fellow time lapsers, I'm video producer and photographer Steve Barth and this is show number 17 for the week beginning December 16th, 2018. Now as I said at the beginning of the show, video gear can be expensive. Getting the right stuff that works with your workflow can, can be a little bit tricky and cost a little bit of money. But we don't want to do that when we're expecting other people to buy Christmas gifts for us. So today we're going to talk about stocking stuffers that are essential for time lapse production. Now, before we get into my list, let us let me define my terms as I typically do. What exactly is a stocking stuffer? Well, I've defined it in two ways. First of all, it has to be small in size. I mean, per the very words, stocking stuffer, it's got to fit within a stocking. And secondarily, it needs to be inexpensive. So for the sake of this list, I've priced things $30 and under. So this is not like a top 10 list where we're going, you know, 10 on down. This is simply 10 things that I think are worth your time and money that are inexpensive that you can put in a stocking and ask for on your Christmas list this year. Let's go. First on the list, if you're a time-lapse producer, you're setting up gear and you're leaving it outside for long periods of time, sometimes overnight, sometimes it's in inclement weather, you never really know. If you remember from a couple shows ago when I was up in Washington, I was shooting right on the coast at night, and even an hour into those time lapses, my cameras were covered in moisture just from the beach air around it. It got really kind of crazy quickly. Uh, my bag, by the time I left, was just soaked just from sitting there outside. So you need a way to protect your gear. And one of the a great way to do it without spending a ton of money is with plastic rain sleeves. Now, essentially this is really just a plastic bag with an end to it that you can pull and tighten. Uh, it's configured in a way that it works with your camera. Really inexpensive. You can buy these for you know right around $8 a piece. Uh, they are reusable, so really easy to you know, just shake the water off of them, throw them in your bag and use them again. But really simple to use when you're going to be spending, you know, an hour or more with your cameras out exposed to the elements. Just throw one of these on there, pull this tight, and you're good to go. So number two is something I've talked about on past shows, and that's a wide angle lens for my iPhone. Now, my iPhone is not a primary filming camera for me. You know, I've got many other systems in place. But for instance, I was shooting out at the coast for the show this last summer. I had one camera going one direction, another camera going in a second direction. And then in direction number three, I suddenly had this amazing scene that started happening. I said, oh, I got to get the camera on there. So I quickly threw my iPhone on, grabbed my little you know, super wide lens for my phone, and it took one of my favorite time lapses I've shot this last year. Just really cool shot. The trick is having a really wide lens for your phone. <clears throat> this guy is made by Aki and is available for $20.99 on Amazon. Just really inexpensive, but man, I use this thing all the time. Now, yes, it does add a little bit of vignetting around the edges of the frame. Not a big deal. Um, as long as I you know, can kind of plan for that. But it really adds a lot of stuff. I keep this you know, just clipped to me constantly and... It's, it's one of my most used iPhone devices. So very handy, very inexpensive. Number three is something that a lot of people call an egg timer. Now we're always trying to capture movement in our time lapses. And there's a lot of different devices out there that will allow you to do that. Now you could go with like a Genie Mini, which, you know, 200 plus dollars. Uh, so these guys are expensive or you could go with, if I can get it open here, 
This this is called a Flomo. Now, granted, they don't necessarily make this particular model anymore. Um, the one I found on Amazon is called a Moto Photo, but really, it's the same technology you would find in an egg timer. You spin it, and it just kind of you know, slowly goes backwards. Now, I will be doing a show sometime in 2019. It's on the schedule. Uh, what's going to put these two head to head? The $200 device versus the what is this guy? You know, the $16 egg timer to see how the movement looks. But really, this does a lot of the same things as as this does. Uh, just very, very low tech uh, and very inexpensive. So I, I use this little guy all the time, especially for cameras that don't have a lot of weight. I'll typically put a, you know, a GoPro on top of one. Again, look for a comparison show, this versus this next year. But this guy is a great way to add a bit of motion in for not much money. Number four on my list is something that you should always have with you because you never know when things might go a little bit wrong or when your camera lenses are going to get a little bit dirty. And that is my handy dandy lens camera sensor cleaning kit. This is something I keep in my camera bag that, that's really, really handy. Um, this is a kit by Altura. In it, there's all sorts of different things that you can use for, for cleaning your camera, um, you know, from different types of cloths to solutions to a, you know, a little blower. You can also annoy your kids and pets with that. Not that I'm speaking from experience, <clears throat> but it does come in handy. So these guys are uh, $23.99. Uh, again, I'm showing the pictures on the screen while I'm talking about them. The links are always in the show notes below on your various media that you're watching this on. But definitely have a lens cleaning kit with you because you never know when things are going to get a little bit dirty. You don't want to end a nice three hour long time lapse with a big spot in the middle of your lens. So always check that before you go into a shooting situation and clean with the proper materials that are not that much money. Number five on the stocking stuffers list is something I've also talked about in the past because I've broken one during the course of this last year's production, but that is external battery packs. I'm not talking specific individual for your cameras, which you can always have those. The problem there is that you have to move the camera. You have to open up the, the, the battery slot, put the new one in. It bumps everything, really screws up your shot. Better just to have it plugged in the whole time. Um, so you can plug in all sorts of stuff to this. I got this back when I was camping to charge my iPhone and turns out uh, I'm using it for a million other things other than camping in my iPhone. I use it to, to power batteries. When I was on the road this last summer and I was shooting 12 to 18 hours a day constantly, I just kept my camera plugged into this and it kept it going the entire time. So uh, these are, this is the Jackery one that I use. These are just $27.99 again on Amazon. Everything on this list is on Amazon, but again, really inexpensive and definitely worth your while. I broke one, had to replace it, but luckily they're inexpensive. Number six, you always want to have some way with you to rig up your camera if you see something beautiful unfolding before you. You know, if the sunset ends up being amazing or the clouds do something really cool that you want to capture, you need a way to get a camera up and stable quickly. One of the things you can do is we call this a Gorilla Pod. Now, Gorilla Pod is more of the brand name behind this. Uh, but there's a lot of generic, less expensive versions of it. Even the Gorilla Pods themselves are not that much money. Now, some Gorilla Pods come with you know a little folder, little stand thing here that you can put your iPhone on. Um, you also want to have them for a regular camera. So I have a link here to, to one that, that looks really cool uh, based on the reviews and such on Amazon. All honesty aside, I don't personally own it. But for 19 bucks. Here's a basic one that you can get, which should be able to work in most situations. Again, have a holder for your iPhone so that you can rig that up and also have the regular tripod head on it so you can rig up any of your cameras just quickly and efficiently. You could strap them to railings, you can strap them to a deck, you can strap them to trees, all sorts of stuff, but just a quick way to get your camera up and mounted very again, quickly and safely. That leads to the next thing on my list, which is kind of similar in that you want to be able to rig up your camera quickly and easily. Now, as I said, a lot of people like to use these guys. They're just a little spring-loaded thing for your camera. Uh, they can kind of have issues sometimes. Very easy to snap. 
<laughs> as we discovered this this last year. But one that was really recommended to me is called the Glyph Quick Release Tripod Mount. Now this is cool for a couple of reasons. One, it's got a little latch so that you can specifically adjust the size of your phone and you can adjust how tight it holds your phone. It also has um, hooks on the side and on the top so you can attach other things to it to really give you a quick rig uh, that you can mount quickly, easily. A lot of just options. And that's one thing we like from our gear is just a lot of different options because then it solves lots of problems. But look this one up. See if you're interested in it. It's really only $27.99 again on Amazon. So really inexpensive, but it adds a lot of capabilities to your time-lapse kit. Now, if you're anything like me, there's a lot going on when you're filming. You know, you're running cameras all over the place and you're trying to get things set up and <laughs> it can be easy for me to misplace one thing and that's the lens cap. Now, traditionally, I will take it out and I'll put it in my back right pocket, but it's been known to sometimes not make it there. So it's always a good idea to have extra lens caps because no one wants to put a lens in a bag and risk scratching it. That's a very expensive, costly mistake. So always get extra lens caps. Um, they, granted, mine have you know name brands on them. They don't have to have name brands on them. As long as they're protecting the lens, that's the important thing. And there's the loud planes again. Now, the nice thing about extra lens caps is that they're not much money either. They're very inexpensive. So, for instance, a generic version of this that doesn't, you know, say Canon across the front, you can get for seven bucks. Now, the one thing you have to do is you've got to make sure you get the right size lens cap. And here is the trick to look for. If you look at your lens, sometimes it's on the outer edge, sometimes it's on the you know the little white words on the inside of it, but there's usually going to be a little circle with a line through it and then a number following that. So for instance, I look on mine, there's that little symbol and then it says it's a 77 millimeter, 77 mm. That's going to be the size of the lens cap or that's going to be the size of the lens filter if you get some of those. That's where you're looking for that number. So I look here, this says it's a 77 millimeter lens. I then go online, I say I want a 77 millimeter lens cap and voila, I have one for seven bucks. And then I'm always protected and I can always make sure that my gear stays protected too if I accidentally lose the lens cap, which I have been known to do. Now, one of the things that has become popular over this last year uh, is to not use a traditional lens cap, but a silicone lens cap. Um, this almost looks like a cup you would put in your card divider, but it's it's uh, just a silicon piece of plastic that's specifically shaped to look like the end of your lens, and it just plops right on the end of it. You can get one for both ends and have it nice and secure. The one thing is this does keep dust and dirt out, and if you're in some place, you know, if you're out on a beach, it adds extra protection to make sure the sand doesn't get in the gears of the lens as well. So it almost does double duty. But those are really popular. There's a lot of them out there. There's name brands, there's generics, all sorts of stuff. But you can look into silicone lens caps, which might uh, add to your kit as well. I'll put a link up in the show notes for those. Those are only for a generic version. Those are you know $12. Uh, so not expensive there. Even the, the name brand versions are about $25, but you can get them for less. Next thing I recommend for the stocking stuffers list for this particular year is that of a nice photographer's flashlight. Now I can spend a lot of time out late at night because I'm doing astronomy time lapse. I'm shooting you know, out on the beach after dark. I'm shooting sunsets, all that kind of stuff. Now I could use my phone, but I'm typically using my phone for a lot of other things. Um, and I just prefer to have an old fashioned nice photographer's flashlight with me. Uh, a lot of different versions out there if you, you look around online. Here's one that's $24.99, really bright, uh, does a really good job of things, but definitely recommend having a specific flashlight, uh, not one that's part of your phone, but an actual flashlight you take with you because you never know when you need to be, you know, let's check on this. Oh, we got to look at this. Oh, it suddenly got really dark while I was out here shooting this time lapse. And now I'm going to, you know, I've got to get back up the hill or I've got to converse this rocky pathway to get up the beach, whatever. Good idea to have these with you. And last, but certainly not least on the stocking stuffers list is a device that I use pretty much every single day. Again, it's about getting your camera up quickly and stable. And to me, with as much as I use GoPros, nothing does it quite as well as the nice little flexible clamp. 
I put my GoPro on the end of it. I can steer this thing in any direction that I want and it's going to stay there. I can clamp it to a tree, to a railing, the car, all sorts of different things. I've, I've put these all over the place. I've even showed you, I think a few times during the course of the show when I accidentally forgot the, the attachment that attaches the GoPro to the tripod. And I'm like, you know what? Just connect this thing to the tripod and does just as good of a job. These guys, not very expensive at all. $16.99 on Amazon. So again, really inexpensive and just something that I use every single day. So there you go. 10 different things, all $30 and under, all small, easy to put in a bag, and more importantly, easy to put in your stocking that you don't have to feel guilty about asking for for Christmas this year. So the list is down in the show notes. Uh, if you're watching on the YouTube version, just you know look at the notes below. If you're watching the audio version, go to whatever podcast you know, player you're using, and you'll have the links right there to all of this stuff. Let me know if you get any of this stuff. Let me know if this is helpful to you. But again, all of this stuff, inexpensive, small, and easy to ask for on a Christmas list so that your 2018 Christmas can be the best it can be and you can get some new time-lapse toys, which will make your life wonderful in the next year. Finally, as you get new time-lapse toys for Christmas, you've got to go try them out, and then you've got to share the results with me here at the Time-Lapse Show so that I can use those in future episodes of the show and really show off your awesome creativity and awesome stuff with all of these new toys, this new gear you have underneath your tree. So that's it for this week's episode. As we're coming up on the Christmas holiday, make sure you get your shopping done. Make sure you share your wishes with everyone else so they can buy stuff for you and then enjoy those holidays with your family. I will have new shows coming out both the week of Christmas and the week of uh, New Year's, so make sure you watch for those, and then again, more coming in 2019. That said, let's wrap up the show. Remember, you can uh, connect with me on social media, all sorts of places. All the information is just right down here. Uh, you can send me a message if you have a question for the show. Just email that to show at thetimelapseshow.com, and I can answer that for you. If you'd rather talk, Instead of type, that's fine too. You can leave us a message on the show hotline, which is 541-321-0472. And then I can use that on a future show. Remember to leave us a review on iTunes. Um, send comments on the YouTube video below. But now go and have an amazing holiday. But remember to grab a camera and speed up the world. Merry Christmas. We'll see you next week.